Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm in Oak Harbor, Washington to show you the installation of this remote hydraulic kit onto a Kubota LX3310 with the uh, LA535 loader. This is absolutely the most affordable and simplest way to get a set of remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today it's going on a Kubota, but I build these for all sorts of makes and models. Just about any tractor out there, I can help you get remotes on your tractor. Today we're going to be hooking this up to the rear end to install a hydraulic top link. Check these out on my website right here below. I sell lots of different sizes of hydraulic top links for these small to medium tractors. When you buy them from me, they come with the hoses, fittings, couplers, everything on them ready to plug in and go. This kit works just as well to run hydraulics to the front of the tractor. If you want to run a grapple or a snow blade, other implement on the front, these hydraulics can do that as well. This installation is going to look a lot like other videos you might have seen from me, but the LX series has its own bracket. So I'm going to show you how that goes on for a really nice, clean looking installation. Everything about this kit is designed for ease of installation. So all we have to do is pop off a couple quick couplers up here in the front, plug in the quick couplers that are included with this kit. You're not really opening up your hydraulic system or having to do anything complicated. It's just simple step by step. So let me show you exactly how this kit goes on the tractor. Most times the first step to install a kit is to install the mounting bracket. I did that here and then realized it is really hard to get to this little bracket behind the loader arm. So I'm going to recommend you do this step before the bracket goes on. We're going to loosen this bracket behind here and we're going to go ahead and loosen the quick couplers underneath so that we can stretch these hoses out. Before you disconnect any hydraulic quick couplers, we need to relieve all the pressure in the hydraulic system. So of course you've got your tractor on level ground, parking brake set, and uh, now take your loader lever, move it to all four positions several times just to make sure all the pressure is out of there. Even a hydraulic hose sitting in the sun can create enough pressure in there to uh, make it difficult to couple again. And if you got a little pressure in there, you might have to bleed it off by pushing that poppet on the end of the uh, coupler. Anytime we're disconnecting couplers, dealing with pressure at all, eyeglasses are great. Let's disconnect. Quick couplers are disconnected and I'm trying to get these hoses out so I can stretch them straight to remove this sleeve, but there is a solid hose keeper back here that I need to release. So all I need to do is disconnect two of these quick couplers under here to your loader and connect them up here to the switching valve. All of these loader hoses are in the same sleeve. So back here, there's a zip tie. I'm going to need to undo that zip tie. I'm going to take all four couplers off, stretch this hose out, take the sleeve off of two hoses, and then uh, connect those two hoses up here to the switching valve. So now's a great time to talk colors. You see in there, we've got white on the top, blue, red, and yellow. And I don't know why Kubota does this, but they, they've separated the pairs. So white and yellow, there we go, white and yellow, are the lift circuit. That's what we're gonna be hooking up to today. The blue and red are the dump circuit. Since we're running rear remotes with this tractor, I really like to use the lift circuit, the white and the yellow, because that gives you full power for any implement you might hook up to the rear. Red and blue are the dump circuit. That works really well for, uh, let's say, a grapple on the front, something like that, that you want to be able to lift and grapple at the same time without having to switch back and forth on this switching valve but there's a trade-off there because the red and the blue, when you push right on the loader lever, it is actually applying pressure to both sides of the cylinder and just depending on the physics of a hydraulic cylinder to extend when you do that. So with a rear implement, you don't quite get full pressure. You don't get full lifting power when you're trying to 
extend a cylinder. We gotta get the hoses stretched out straight to get two of the hoses out of this sleeve. And we'll need to take off these zip ties and this kind of all-in-one keeper here. All those things need to come off so that we can send two of the hoses up to the quick couplers on the switching valve. Two of them stay down on the tractor connector. This zip tie on here is reusable. Just push the little push tab there. This zip tie is not reusable. We'll have to clip that off. Now we're gonna put the two hoses that are gonna stay on the tractor connectors back into the sleeve. And we've been debating colors on this tractor. I was just talking to the owner and he's not gonna be using any really high power, high pressure implements on the remote circuit. And he really wants to install this on the dump circuit. So uh, that's gonna be just fine. We're gonna be hooking the red and the blue up to the switching valve. White and yellow are gonna stay in place. So totally up to you, and you can always swap them later, no problem at all. White and yellow are staying on the tractor, so they're going to go back into this sleeve. And we'll go ahead and connect those right back up to the tractor. I've got the hardware kit with the bolts, nuts, lock washers handy. And this is a two-part bracket, so we'll attach the long arm right here to this lower hole. And then the top bracket will attach to this upper hole and connect the two together. For the upper mount, we have this small metal back bracket, and it's got some adjustable slots so you can really uh, get the angle just like you want. And I use this for several different brackets. So for this tractor, I like to put a washer on, and then we're gonna use the uh, round hole, not the slot. And uh, this bolt is a little smaller than the hole. That allows us to get it into that hole without removing the loader. If we used a full diameter bolt, we'd have to take the loader off and these are plenty strong for this bracket. So, slide it up in there. And because we're using a slightly smaller bolt than the hole, I like a washer, lock washer, and nut. For this part at the top, you've got uh, an adjustable slot here. We can set right to the inside of that can bring it all the way into the hole that gets it just about vertical the hole instead of the slot I'll put a washer on there just so they all match and lock washer and nut on the back and I'm ready to tighten it up With the bracket fully mounted, now I'm ready to put the valve onto the bracket. I've got the two and a half inch bolts out of the hardware kit. Those are going to slide right in here and through the valve. Set the valve on with the long hoses sticking out the bottom, washers and lock washers on the back with the nuts and tighten it up with a half inch wrench. As we finish mounting the valve, now is a great time to put the knob on. It's got the lock washer on there. This is larger than the other lock washers. So if you uh, accidentally used this 3 8 lock washer somewhere else, go find it. It's for your knob. So just thread it into the piston here. 
and often this piston will start turning before you get it quite as tight as you like but you can grab this piston with a pair of vice grips to keep it from turning and finish tightening the knob but do not grab inside this circlip where the piston has to go into the body grab outside that circlip so yeah you can grab right out here outside the circlip there we go that knob is nice and tight now it's time to hook up the hydraulics to this switching valve if i look down here the red is a little more forward than the blue so as i work on this valve i'm going to take my red hose and it's going to go on the forward and I like to do these one at a time on lots of tractors, just so I don't get anything mixed up. On this tractor, we did have to disconnect everything at once, but we had our hoses marked with the colors. If yours have broken off or you lost them, take some colored zip ties, some colored tape or something, and mark all the fittings so that you can patch them together correctly. Red is connected to the front. I'm now gonna take the supply hose that's pointing down these three foot hoses, the one that's on the front is going to match to the red. So I'm going to find that hose, that's this one, and I'm going to hook it right back to the red underneath there. All right, now we repeat with the blue in the rear. I like to take my time and not have my hoses crossing even more than necessary so we get a really good looking install. Those hoses are at a nice resting spot, and we can zip tie those against these other hoses and against that uh, clamp down there so we're not rubbing against the hood. Blue is connected here. Now I'm going to take the three foot hose out of the rear and connect it to the blue underneath. All right, with that step, the hydraulics are connected into your loader. The last thing we need to do is run these remote hoses under the tractor to their final mounting spot. I'm just going to look for a nice neat routing underneath the floorboard away from brakes and other parts that move away from the hydraulic filter so that future maintenance doesn't have hoses in the way and I'm going to run them up inboard of the roller for protection and above the axles so that those hoses are nice and protected for brush and other things that might snag them underneath. Now I just need to find a mounting spot for this T-bracket. The T-bracket mounts to the tractor and then a coupler mounts onto the T-bracket with a U-bolt. The U-bolt just goes over the coupler like that and slides into the T-bracket. So I need to find a spot to mount this and there's of course a hose coming out of this coupler on the tractor and this inner piston has to be able to slide about three eighths of an inch. When I go to shove in a coupler, this inner part has to spring out this direction about three eighths of an inch. When I pull a coupler out, it's got to spring this way about three eighths of an inch. So just don't mount it where the hose is binding up or if there's a coupler here that is binding up against the tractor. On this LX series, it's got the rollover protection right here. So I send the kit with a backer bar all we need to do is drop bolts through the t-bracket slide that over the rollover protection here and put the backer bar on the back side with lock washers and a nut we'll have it mounted All right, the last steps we need to take are to zip tie the hoses up underneath the tractor. But before I leave the back of the tractor, I do like to test these couplers and just make sure they spring in and out, are able to accept and release a coupler just fine. So I've got the hydraulic top link that we're about to put on this tractor, and I've got one of the couplers on the hose. So to connect a coupler, all I need to do is shove in, and this inner piston should slide in 
spring back to hold it. That works great. Second one, slides in to connect, holds it fine, pull out to disconnect. Now we're ready to install this hydraulic top link. On your tractor, you may need to have these arms all the way up or all the way down to be able to slide this pin to the side. On this LX tractor, all the way up gives us enough space here. That works great. And if you're going to add a hydraulic top link to these LX tractors or a B or BX Kubota tractor, they make these transmission attachment points really narrow. So you need a hydraulic top link with a narrower base end. If you buy one from me and let me know you're going on a B, BX or LX tractor, I'll shave down that base for you so that it fits. We're gonna go ahead and hook up the hydraulic top link to the couplers. On this tractor, we're hooking up to the dump circuit, so it has to be extending when we push to the right on the loader lever. We haven't marked these hoses. I'm not sure which one it is, so we're just gonna hook it up. If it extends when we push right and retracts when we pull left, we've got it right. If you're hooking up to your lift circuit, you may want it to pull in when you push forward, out when you pull back, you may get it wrong here, you can always swap these couplers later. Okay, hydraulic top link is attached. Well, there you have it. The simplest and most affordable way to get a set of remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today on a Kubota LX series, but I build these for all makes and models out there. Check out my website right below. My phone number is there. Let me know how I can help you with your tractor. Stay tuned here for a demo. I'll show you exactly how this kit works. All right, let me show you how this kit works. With the knob out, I have totally normal loader function, both lift and dump. Of course, with the engine off, only gravity can do the work. I'll show you with the engine on in just a second. When I'm ready to run the hydraulic remote, I push the knob in, and now forward and back still controls the lift. Right and left is gonna control the hydraulic top. For this tractor, we chose to install it on the dump circuit, but you can certainly install it on the lift circuit as well. As you install it on the lift, you also have the float function. You can shove the loader lever completely forward, and that hydraulic top link can drift in and out without applying pressure up or down. You can see the hydraulic top link down there, hopefully, and now you'll see it go in and out. We we'll start with the knob out. I've got totally normal loader function, lift and dump. When I'm ready to run the hydraulic top link, Push in on the knob, and now right and left is going to control that hydraulic top one. And I still have my lift function. Some customers really like to keep the hydraulic lift function in the front. Um, if you're mowing and want to be able to run the, uh, the loader against the ground, you know, looking for objects or something, and then right and left running your hydraulic top link. If you've got options, you can always swap it later. Give me a shout. My number is on my website below. Let me know how I can help you improve your tractor. Thanks for watching. How about this scenery? Oh my gosh, I think this is the best spot I have ever worked on a tractor. We got snow-capped mountains back here, a little harbor, and uh, just a beautiful April day in uh, northern Washington.